Hi, this is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting video 6.1 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This video provides a step-by-step -step description of the steps involved in performing coronary angiography. Coronary and bypass graft angiography is the sixth of the 14 steps of percutaneous coronary intervention and comes after engagement has been achieved. Angiography involves eight steps. Step number one is to ensure that there is good pressure waveform. Step number two is to give a small test contrast injection. Number three, give intracoronary nitroglycerin. Number four, optimally position the patient, the image receptor, the seals, and the operator. Number five, check the pressure in the EKG. Number six, perform the actual CINE angiogram. Number seven, check the pressure in the EKG once again, as in step five. And step eight is to interpret the angiogram. Starting with step one, ensuring good pressure waveform. This is critical before any contrast injection. The reason is that if uh, there is dampening, like as in this particular case, then contrast injection can lead to dissection or cause arrhythmias or other complications. So good pressure waveform is critical before injecting contrast. We want a nice pressure waveform without dampening before contrast is injected. Step number two is to give a small test injection of contrast. This is an example, JL4 getting into the left main. A small amount of contrast, 1-2 cc is injected for many reasons. The first one is to confirm that the catheter is actually engaged. The second one is to check that there is no osteal disease. Third is to check that the catheter is coaxial with the vessel, which is not in this particular case. In this catheter is actually pointing towards the roof of the left main. And then to ensure that the catheter is not too deeply intubated, Usually we want 2 to 3 millimeters intubation, and in this case the catheter is indeed not deeply intubated. This is another example. This is a, a little test injection after engaging a bypass graft to the right coronary artery. The test injection actually reveals that the bypass is occluded. Before giving an injection, it is important to hold the manifold vertical so that any potential bubbles in the contrast go to the top and do not come into the line and get injected into the coronary artery. Many bad things can happen when injecting contrast into coronaries, starting with injury of the vessel, causing dissection, potentially acute vessel closure and even patient's death. Second, embolization, if there are bubbles in the line, as in this case, or if there is thrombus or other material in the line that can occlude the coronary artery and cause severe complications. And finally, arrhythmias can happen, for example, if injection is done in a small conus branch. Step number three is to give intracoronary nitroglycerin. This is a critical step and should be done in all patients unless they are hypotensive. The reason is that the coronaries are dynamic structures and they can go into spasm that can interfere with the interpretation of the presence of fixed coronary stenosis. The dose of nitro usually is 200 mics in normotensive patients. It's 100 mics in patients who have a blood pressure between 100 and 120. And then uh, 0 to 50 mics uh, in patients who have uh, systolic blood pressure less than 100 millimeters mercury. This is why nitroglycerin is important. This is angiography of the right coronary artery showing a significant osteo lesion. However, after nitroglycerin was given, there is no significant lesion. This was all spasm, likely due to manipulations of a catheter to engage the right coronary artery. So nitroglycerin should be given uh, whenever possible before coronary angiography. The way to give it is either on the side port of the manifold, aspirating and then injecting the nitro. Another way is to use the nitroglycerin on the stick technique, in which uh, the nitro is injected through the introducer, directly through the back end of the tube. If uh, nitroglycerin causes hypotension, then uh, the operator needs to wait. Usually fluids are given, normal selling, until the blood pressure recovers, which usually happens in a few minutes. Rarely in cases of severe hypotension, usually in the setting of vasovagal reaction, then a vasopressor pressure may be given, such as phenylephrine. Step number four is to optimally position the patient, as well as the image receptor and the seals and the operator, in order first to optimize the imaging, 
and second, to minimize the scatter radiation to the operators. How is this done? First of all, the table should be as high as possible. The image receptor should be as close as possible to the patient. And then seals should be placed between the patient and the operator. And the operator should move as much back as possible since the scatter radiation, the intensity is proportional to the square of the distance between the scatter point and the operator. Which projections to use? Every operator has their own preferences, but these are the ones commonly used in our practice. Five projections from the left coronary, three for the right, and then uh, two for the bypasses to the left, uh, and two or three for the internal mammary grafts. Specifically for the left main, I personally perform these five projections in this, in this sequence in every patient. This way there are no projections missing. The first projection is usually an anterior-posterior projection which is good for visualizing the left main. The second one is an areocaudal that opens up the circumflex and obtuse marginals. The third one is the areocranial, which provides a good visualization of the LAD. The fourth is the eleocranial, that provides good visualization of the LAD in diagonals. And finally, the last one is the eleocaudal, or spider, that is good for visualizing the left main bifurcation, as well as the circumflex and the proximal LAD. When it comes to the right, there are three common projections. The first one is the standard LAO, in, which is very good for visualizing the proximal, mid, and distal RCA. Then the LAO cranial, which provides good visualization of the distal RCA, PDA, and posterolateral bifurcation. And finally, the RAO, which is great for the mid portion of the RCA, as well for the PDA and the posterolateral vessel. There is actually a separate video that will discuss the projections and interpretation for each artery in more detail. When it comes to the operator, it is important to move the operator as far back as possible. And one way to do this is to use an extension of tubing so that the manifold can be further back on the table. Also, the seal should be placed appropriately. This seal is not doing anything here, being far away from the source. Instead, the seal should be placed right next to the patient. And we should not forget that the scatter comes right at the back of the patient, so the seal should be low in order to block the scatter radiation from the patient to the operator. In very obese patients, visualization can be challenging, and in such patients, less angulation is important to obtain more clean images. And then moving the image receptor can actually result in injury of the operator or the patient. That's why the operator who moves the image intensifier should be careful about how that is moved. Number five for the angiography steps is to assess the pressure and the electrocardiogram. This is done once again before the angiogram. We want to make sure there are no ST changes, that the pressure waveform is excellent as we did prior to the testing. Because if there is dampening, as we discussed before, this can cause complications. Therefore, contrast should not be injected until this is corrected. The sixth step is to perform the actual cine angiography. This is done by filling up the syringe with contrast. And then it's critical to keep the syringe vertical, as we discussed before, to minimize any bubbles entering into the line. And then once we're ready, the operator turns uh, the three-way stopcock and then injects and then obtains the image of the coronary artery. The sequence is usually to first collimate and position the X-ray image intensifier properly, then start the CINE, and then after that wait for one to two seconds so that uh, if there is any calcium, it can be visualized. Then the contrast is injected. It is important to see the contrast coming back into the aorta. Therefore, the, visualize all the way to the ostium. Otherwise, ostia lesions can be missed. Then, panning may be needed to visualize all the coronary segments, all the distal branches of the coronary arteries. Panning may be needed for that, but if the setup is done well, it may not be necessary. And then this is repeated in orthogonal projections to ensure we're not missing any lesions. Sometimes, guide extensions are done during senior geography. If this is the case, they should be held. Sometimes uh, they can actually uh, be uh, moved during the injection deep into the coronary artery. 
there can be several challenges to getting good angiograms. The first one is inability to completely fill the coronary artery graft, and this is critical because if it is not completely filled, the angiogram may not be of diagnostic quality. So there should be good filling, good backflow into the aorta. This is an example where the vessels do not fill properly. There are many causes for this, including use of small catheters or catheters with side holes that let the contrast escape. If the coronaries are very large or ectatic, if the engagement is poor, if the patient has high coronary flow, and a classic example, classic example is severe aortic stenosis or hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, if the contrast has high viscosity, if uh, the injection is not strong, and if the patient has high left ventricular and diastolic pressure. This is an example of the importance of good engagement. On the left, uh, the catheter is not uh, properly engaged into the right coronary artery, therefore the angiogram is very suboptimal. On the right panel, the catheter is well engaged, and now we can well visualize the entire RCA as well as the ostium. A second challenge with senior geography is disengagement of the catheter during the injection. This is an example. This is another example where the catheter comes out during the injection. There are many causes. The number one is poor engagement to start with, as well as very strong contrast injection. Sometimes the catheter support is um, not strong, and sometimes the patient may take some deep breaths that can lead to disengagement. And this is especially true for radial axis. How to fix this problem? Re-engaging dif using different catheters. Sometimes putting a guide wire can stabilize the catheter and enable good angiography. Or a guide extension can be used. And finally, when injecting, it is important to start slowly and then increase the pressure as time goes by. This is an example in which forceful injection from the beginning pushes the catheter out, but the same catheter and just slow ramp up of the pressure allows good feeling of the coronary artery as well as the ostium without the catheter kicking back into the aort. A third challenge with scene in geography is inability to visualize some coronary segments, and this sometimes has to do with setup. In this case, um, uh, the patient was not positioned optimally and the image receptor could not go all the way to visualize the distal portions of the LAD and the OMs. So the most common causes are poor engagement, the injection is weak, there is overlap of coronary segments, the patient is large, or the views obtained are not enough. And the solutions to that is to get a better engagement, to use a larger catheter and use different projections. The seventh step after the angiogram is performed is to once again look at the EKG as well as the pressure waveform because sometimes complications can happen. This is an example of ventricular fibrillation happening after coronary angiography. And if that happens, one is to be aware and um, correct it immediately with defibrillation. This is another example. Sometimes injecting contrast can cause some transient EKG changes but it is important to ensure they are transient and there is no issue with coronary flow, such as acute coronary vessel occlusion, for example, due to dissection. And finally, the eighth and last step of angiography is to interpret the angiogram that has been obtained. This step depends critically on excellent performance of the angiogram based on the previous steps. Otherwise, if uh, the quality of the angiogram is poor, interpretation may not be possible. Such cases is when there is poor feeling of the coronary artery or when not all coronary segments have been visualized in orthogonal projections. There are several characteristics that are being looked at every angiogram that will be discussed on video 6.2 as well as video 6.3. So in summary, there are eight steps to performing coronary angiography. These steps are all critically important, taking shortcuts, can lead to really severe complications. For example, injecting without ensuring there is no pressure dampening, can dissect the vessel, which can be the left main, that can lead to acute decompensation and even death. So it's meticulously important to pay attention to the technique, get the excellent angiograms with good feeling of the coronary arteries that will allow adequate interpretation and then guide the further management decisions for this particular patient. Thank you.